you what type of reaction this is before we even start with it. What type of reaction? Decomposition. Not decomposition. It's synthesis. We're building it. Let's remember back. If, this, if we know this is a synthesis reaction, and we know decomposition is the opposite of that, remind me what we know about combustion reactions. Okay, they do have to do with burning. I would agree. They start with some sort of hydrocarbon, some combination of carbon and hydrogen, and they have to react with what? oxygen gas the products of a combustion reaction are very specific we always have a set of two products that have come from a combustion reaction and those two products are carbon dioxide and oh i want to write water sorry h2o okay carbon dioxide and water are the two products of a combustion reaction and so we miss Combustion reaction, I think, are, are one of the most commonly missed type. We try to look for a substitution there. We try to look for something else. But in all reality, it's just a combustion reaction, right? You're looking for a specific set of products, okay? And then our other two categories would be single displacement or double displacement. That's where we see a swap happen. Double displacement, I think, are the ones we're most comfortable with. They're the ones that we work with the most. And we're going to work with them today a little bit more as well. But, um, okay. I think this reaction is not yet balanced. So why don't you go ahead and balance our reaction here? Because I, I just don't believe that it is balanced at this point. Okay, is that how you made it happen? Four, three, two? Okay, good, right. We needed the least common multiple of two and three for our oxygens, and then we can adjust iron after that. So, okay, today we're gonna talk about something called excess reactants. And so I want you to think through what that concept might mean, right? I want you to really think about what might it mean to be a reactant in excess, okay? We know what a limiting reactant is, it's one of our reactants that limits the amount of production we can make. So what do you think an excess reactant must mean? The extra, or what's another word for excess? Extra, leftover, surplus, right? All of those ways, all of those words help me describe excess. And so when we're talking about an excess reactant, we're going to look at, we're going to determine the limiting reactant and then find out how much of our other reactant is left over, right? How much of that is sitting in our container, non-reacting, okay? So we still have to solve the whole problem first. This question is gonna ask us for quite a few things, okay? It says 45 grams of iron, 45 grams of iron, react with 87 grams of oxygen gas, it asks us, what is the limiting reactant? So that's just part of the problem that it's asking us for. But it wants us to identify the limiting reactant. Not all questions will ask us to straight up identify the limiting reactant, but it will ask us to draw conclusions based on understanding which one is the limiting reactant. Does that make sense? I can't answer the amount of product I can make without understanding and knowing that one of them is limiting, okay? So not always will it ask you that question, um, but you will have to understand that, okay? What is the maximum amount of iron oxide that can be formed? We're gonna go ahead and, and ask for that in grams. So let's go ahead and take it all the way to grams. And then how much excess reactant is left over? How much excess reactant is left over? So we've got a couple of different things we have to do here. <laughs> First and foremost is finding the amount of our product. So we're going to take both of our starting amounts to our product. Okay, so let's go ahead and run the charts for those. Okay. 
by now, I think we should feel really comfortable moving gram to gram. Would, I, would you guys agree with that? We're pretty comfortable with that? Okay. Um, one mole of iron, I think, is 55.85 or 55.9 grams. Okay. Four to two. Where does this numbers come from? The mole ratio, or they come from the balance reaction. Now, could I reduce those down to be a one and a two? Yes, I could, but is there a need for me to do that? No, because I'm going to plug them into my calculator anyway. So I don't think there's a need to reduce those. Just leave them. Now we'll go back to moles getting the one, and then we do need our molar mass of iron oxide. Molar mass of iron oxide. Um, I don't know, were we about 159.7? Somewhere in that range, right? Around 160 is probably okay. I kept iron at 0.85. I think you could take it to 0.9. I probably wouldn't want you to take iron to 56. All right, so I run it out and I get about 64.34 grams of iron oxide. <clears throat> now I'm going to do the same for my other starting amount, right? Whenever we're given two starting amounts, that should tell us that we're going to have to do two charts. We're going to have to find our limiting reactant. So now I'm going to take my oxygen. Now, it says oxygen gas. Can I take the liberties of just making that an O? I can't. I have to, first of all, I have to go with what's in the reaction. I'm seeing some of you kind of just, it says, maybe it just it would have even said oxygen, right? If it just said I started with 87 grams of oxygen, some of you would just do this and start making your chart, even though there's not a single O anywhere in the in the reaction. You have to go take a substance from the reaction. So make sure we know oxygen gas is diatomic, so it's O2, but O2 is also the thing that's in the reaction. So we need to be using that. Okay, so grams of O2 to moles of O2. Mole to mole ratio here. And then mole to gram. Okay, so at this point, am I able to answer the first part of my question? Which is my limiting reactant? I can answer that. So which one is it, iron or is it oxygen? Iron, iron is my limiting reactant because it gives me the smaller amount of product, right? That means my production will stop. So my limiting reactant is iron. Okay, then it says, what is the maximum amount of iron oxide that can be formed? Is it going to be 64 or 289? 64. So here's what I was talking about earlier. Some of you just do this, right? That's not, that's not giving me a, 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 a visual of you understanding the question, right? I will stop making iron oxide after I get to 64.34 grams because by producing this much, that means we will have used up all 45 grams of our iron. And if we've used up all of that reactant, I can't make anything else, right? I'm, I'm out of my ingredient there. So my production stops. Are we clear with what the chart is really telling us? It's telling us that if we use all 45 grams of iron, here's how much of our product we can make. Okay? Yeah, go ahead, Raina. Home the point that the chart, right, the whole conversion system is telling us that if we use all 45 grams of our starting amount, this is what is going to happen. This is what is needed or this is what can be produced. Okay? So now that we know, let's go back up here. And let me erase all this stuff so we can see this again. This was four, 
three, and two, okay? We know that iron is our limiting reactant, right? And so we know that this must then be in excess, right? That's gonna be our excess reactant, okay? It's gonna be left over. So now I need to figure out how many grams of oxygen do I need to use in order to use up all 45 grams of my iron? Okay, I'm dumping in 87 grams of oxygen, but it doesn't mean I might use all of it up. I might, I might have some left over. So I start again with my limiting reactant, 45 grams of iron. And this time I'm going to end up in grams of O2. I want to convert and see how many grams of oxygen do I need to use to react with all 45 grams. And then I can subtract that from my starting amount, okay? So let's go grams of iron. And we're going to end up all the way in grams of our other reactant, which in this case is O2. All right, tell me, did your chart come out similar to mine? 19.34 grams. Okay, so now we have to decide, does this 19.34, does that tell me how many grams of oxygen are left over? Or does it tell me how many grams of oxygen are required? It's how many are required. So I've got it, with, with these types of problems, we have numbers flying everywhere. You've got to be really, really diligent about staying organized and really using your context clues in your problem, right? We've got so many numbers happening here. It's really easy to, to number one, miss this next step or to use the wrong numbers to do it, okay? So even when I do this, I like to write out the word used. I used 19.34 grams of oxygen, but that's not what my question asks. It asks how much is left over. And so I'm going to take my starting amount of oxygen. So how much did I dump in? How much oxygen did I dump in to start? 87 grams. So I'm going to take 87 grams minus the 19.34 that I used. And that will tell me that I have 67.66 grams of O2 left over. Right? Do we see that last step we're doing there? Okay, we're going to take that starting amount um, and subtract out the amount that was used. Would it be a red flag if that number of oxygen gas used, if it came out as 100? Would that be a red flag? Why would that be a red flag? It's more than I started with, right? So we can't get so caught up in the numbers that we completely, you know, we had a math problem, but we didn't catch it, right? That should be a red flag to you saying, I can't have used more than I put in, right? That should be a, a check for you to go back and look, maybe your molar mass was wrong or maybe you had your mole ratio flipped or a simple math error, but you can't just, I, I don't want you to just run with your numbers, right? Well, I put it in my calculator once and that's what I got, even though it makes no sense, right? You got to make sure, does your answer seem reasonable and does it make sense based on the problem, right? Had I got, you know, 104 grams of O2 used, I should have said like, that doesn't make sense. I only started with 87, right? So I should have gone back and made a fix there. So I just want you to kind of be thinking about that. It's really easy to get caught up and just running the math and, and going, 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 but we got to make sure our answer makes sense. Okay.